United Kingdom is a European country with a population of 66 million. It is a constitutional monarchy with the Queen as a head of state and still has links with its former empire through the Commonwealth. Cultural diversity has been increased by migration within the British Isles as well as immigration from Europe and overseas. The 1991 consensus was the first to include ethnic backgrounds and showed that there were 3 million people in the UK of non-European birth or ancestry. UK towns are still becoming increasingly multiracial, requiring major adjustments within the indigenous communities. It is a combination of all these different countries' individual cultures that has shaped the culture of the United Kingdom to what it is today. Austria is a small Central European country with a population of 8.8 .8 million inhabitants. Austria's landscape is extremely diverse, reaching from the flat plains of the eastern border to the high mountains of the Alps. Politically speaking, Austria was a monarchy led by the Habsburgs until 1918 and has since then become a republic with a brief stint as part of the Third Reich in, after the Anschluss in 1938. It is a very rich nation with a GDP per capita of $47,290.91 and it ranks 20th in the global HDI rankings. Its recent overall economic performance has been strong for, for HIC with a GDP growth rate of 2.7% in 2018. In Austria, the official national language is Austrian German. It is very similar to German, with the exception of the odd word here and there, and is usually spoken in a slightly different accent. In fact, Standard German and Austrian German are so similar that a person fluent in one would have absolutely no problem understanding the other, even if you may find that, that, that some words are slightly unusual. Furthermore, 73% of Austrians speak English, with an even higher percentage of Austrian businessmen speaking English. However, there is another potential language barrier as people from different countries tend to imply different meanings into the same words due to the way they have been taught English. For example, when an Englishman says, could we consider some other options, an Austrian may believe that he has not yet decided on the proposal, whilst it is actually a polite way for the Brit to say he does not like the proposal. The issue is faced whenever working abroad or sometimes even when working in different regions of the same country. As Austrians, on average, tend to be sufficiently capable of communicating in the English language. This should not pose a serious challenge to the endeavour, especially as the same problem would be encountered elsewhere abroad. Nearly 49% of the UK identify as irreligious through being either an atheist or an agnostic. Many researchers believe this is due to a post-Christian period where the dominant religion of Christianity has been influenced by different values and cultures. Christianity now only makes up 34% of the population, with Roman Catholicism making up 8%. Islam now makes up 5%, with all other religions making up 4%. Roman Catholicism made up 74% of Austria's population, with about 5% identifying themselves as Protestants. However, Catholicism is slowly declining in Austria. In 2011, January, the percentage of Catholics in Austria was 64.1% and the percentage of Protestants was 3.8%. The differences in the spread of religion between these two countries is unlikely to have an effect on the relationship between them within business. Core values differ quite noticeably between Austria and the United Kingdom, despite both being quite affluent countries, predominantly in the fourth sector. In the United Kingdom, core values are embedded into individuals from an early age throughout school, with the aim of these values to be accepted, respected and tolerated. The rule of law is the first, as it is taught that arbitrary exercises of power are unacceptable and should be subordinated to well-defined and established laws. It is identified that the UK follows a democracy. Each individual has their human rights. Austrian values sway towards the more traditional end of the spectrum. The underlying theme is that an Austrian person's character reflects that of the country. Both Austria and the UK score highly for individualism. People are expected to take care of themselves and immediate family, and to be less invested in society or their community. The United Kingdom's individualistic mentality values privacy, pursues personal fulfilment, and they believe it is important to invest time in personal relationships for both social time and business. Austria has an individualist mentality yet scores slightly less than the UK. There is a loosely knit social framework in which individuals are expected to take care of themselves and their immediate families like in the UK. In keeping with their traditional values, what people perceive of your family name is far more paramount than in British society. 
outsourcing to and working with Austria would not be an issue as the similarities in their individualistic cultures means there is no confusion. Power distance can be defined as the extent to which the community accepts and endorses authority, power differences and status privileges. This is an extremely important factor in looking at the compatibility of two different workforces as contrasting power differences can often lead to mismanagement, friction between superiors and subordinates as well as loss in productivity. Imagine a superior who is used to a high power distance and hence treats his employees very formally, following a strict protocol in regards to all office related aspects such as meetings, dress code and timings. He is now relocated to a different office where a different culture exists and hence subordinates are used to very low power distance. He then tries to impose his management style upon the employees who do not agree with it as they are unwilling to give up their previous freedom. The difference in power distance between Austria and the UK, with Austria scoring 11 points whilst the UK scores a more significant 35 points, ranked by Hofstede Insights. This could potentially become an issue if this project were to go ahead, if British managers would be sent there to run operations or vice versa. However, it is also very much a character dependent issue. Uncertainty avoidance is the extent to which individuals are comfortable with risk or uncertainty. The UK has a low uncertainty avoidance and is therefore tolerant of uncertainty. An example of this tolerance would be Brexit, where 52% of the electorate voted to leave the European Union, which could be seen by many as a large economic risk. Generally, UK companies and individuals prefer decentralised control and fewer rules and regulations. This can be seen by the Deregulation Act of 2015, which aimed to remove restrictions on business. Austria, in, in contrast, has a higher uncertainty avoidance, meaning they favour certainty and structure, as they are less willing to take on risk. This approach to risk results in more centralised control of business and a focus on management of people. Hence, Austria is more likely to have an emphasis on rules and regulations compared to the UK. Masculinity focuses on competition and career progression, whilst femininity emphasises empathy and quality of life. Both the UK and Austria have masculine cultures, Austria more so, which scored 79 compared to the UK's 66. Therefore, this shows that for a UK-based company to operate in Austria, then it would have to adapt to a more competitive environment and learn to manage employees who would be very competitive amongst themselves to progress in their careers. Furthermore, a UK-based manufacturing company would also have to be aware of the focus on performance and that their managers must be decisive. Hospitality and etiquette are crucial when trying to negotiate business matters. In the UK, business operations tend to be very formal affairs and the British tend to be driven when trying to pursue their ambitions. However, rather than be direct, which can come across as rude, the British are often hint at what they really mean and try to put the point forward in a less direct manner. Furthermore, British feel that they are very important and as a country they are a world leader. Therefore, they have no issue in standing their ground, Brexit being a prime example of this. This isn't too far away from how negotiations take place in Austria, but there are some differences. Internal affairs and the general business climates are usually more relaxed, which is often represented by a more lenient dress code, for example wearing no ties in the summer. Another difference is that Austrians are more likely to negotiate a suboptimal deal rather than no deal at all, and finding middle ground is crucial to both parties leaving satisfied. But there are no pushovers. When stakes are high, Austrians tend to have very well thought out and tactical approach to negotiate in order to come away with what they've aimed for. However, when the deal is struck, Austrians see it as part of business life to engage in social events outside the firm by doing things such as inviting managers to the opera. Another factor to consider is unemployment. Austria has a high unemployment rate of 4.8% compared to only 4% in the UK. This could be of benefit as it helps to keep workers under control and more productive. The political climate is much more stable in Austria compared to the UK. Due to Brexit negotiations, the value of the pound has fallen which makes imports more expensive. Austria, however, will continue to benefit from EU trade regulations, which may not be the case for the UK. Infrastructure in Austria is very good. They have a more modern and efficient road layout compared to that of the UK and can deal with extreme weather conditions much more effectively. Austria is also a small country with a total of roughly 32,000 square miles. 
this will make worker mobility a lot better.